Lindsay, welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing my October book haul. Apart from today, I hadn't really bought that many books in the month of October. I kind of feel like my book buying has slowed down a little bit, I probably said that in last month's haul. And then today I went to a book fair and bought eight books, nine books, eight books, so it's a bit bigger than it would have been. But there we go, let's jump in. So the first book that I've got to show you is uh, the illustrated edition of The Tales of Beadle the Bard by J.K. Rowling and illustrated by Chris Riddell. I picked this up when I was in London a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago now, uh, because uh, Forbidden Planet were doing signed copies and they were signed on the actual page itself, so there's, there's the signature. Uh, so I had to snatch a copy up. Um, but this, this is basically what it says on the tin, it's illustrated, there's a lovely illustration there. Um, yeah, so this is another one to add to my ever-growing Harry Potter collection. Then I was really inspired at the beginning of the month to buy a couple of uh, Victorian pieces of literature because it was Victober. Uh, the first of those is Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility, although this is not really Victorian literature. It's sort of Georgian, I think, but it's the first of her novels and I wanted to read Jane Austen's novels in order um, and I didn't have Sense and Sensibility, so I thought I thought I would buy it in this, I think it's in this really gorgeous vintage classics edition, it's absolutely beautiful. So I have that now, so I can finally get started on that project. And then for Victober, I picked up Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. This was the read-along book I think that they were doing. I've read two chapters of it in the whole in the whole of October so I'm not doing too well on that. It's what is it today? Saturday the 27th? I'm filming this a little bit early before the end of October. I'm not planning on buying any more books but yeah I've read two chapters so that's a bit of a fail but I figured I started it and I'll just continue on when I feel like it. This will probably take me as long as Jane Eyre did what was that? It was quite a few months. But who cares? I'm reading it. I'm taking my time with it. It's all good. I went to a conference for work again at the beginning of October and Ben Crystal was there and Ben Crystal is David Crystal's son and he has just published his book called Shakespeare on Toast. And so he was at the conference. Uh, you could buy his book and get him to sign it. So I got him to to um, dedicate it to Stefan and I and this is basically like a beginner's guide to Shakespeare so it says on the back um, whether you're studying Shakespeare for the first time or you've never set foot near one of his plays but have always wanted to this book smashes down the walls that have been built up around this untouchable literary figure so I read the first couple of chapters of this while I was waiting in line to get it signed and it was really it was really readable, it was really compelling, it was quite funny at times. I just think the style of it is going to be for me and yeah, if you're looking for a book for somebody who is finding Shakespeare tough or I don't know, like you've got, I don't know, a teenager in the family who's studying at school maybe, maybe this would be a good book for them to read. I don't know, I can't fully recommend it yet because I haven't read it all the way through, um, but I am definitely excited to. I did an Amazon order earlier in the month because I really wanted to get some more Sarah Morgan books so I got the books two and three in the Puffin Island um, trilogy which I read book number one I think last month and really enjoyed it so book two is Some Kind of Wonderful and book three is Christmas Ever After um, I've read Some Kind of Wonderful I quite liked it so um, more of my thoughts on that at the end of the month but um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to reading book three, but book three is kind of set at Christmas, so I kind of figured that I would leave that until December and read it then. Um, but yeah, I've got that one to go. And then I also picked up the first book in a different one of her trilogies. This is called um, Sleigh Bells in the Snow. Um, does it say what series it's in? Um, no, it doesn't. I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is, but it's a different series. I think, I, I kind of feel like it's like the O'Neill Brothers or something like that. I've really been enjoying Sarah Morgan's writing, so I really wanted to get some more of her stuff. Again, this is Christmas orientated, so this will be a December read. 
I also bought a book for my husband during that haul um, and it is The Elephant Whisperer by Lawrence Anthony. I heard about this over on Lauren's channel from Lauren and the Books. Her other half, um, David, really enjoyed this book and he was reading the one with the rhino on the front which I can't remember the name of now. Um, but this is basically a non-fiction book about Lawrence Anthony's experience of running an elephant sanctuary or or like saving the elephants in this particular part of where is it uh, South Africa so um yeah I bought it for my husband but I'm really interested in reading it too he's already read it he said it was fantastic so another one to look forward to and then the last set of books that I've got to show you are all ones that I picked up today when I went to a local book fair. Um, you may remember that I went to this book fair last year um, and did a bit of a haul on my channel. Um, I've been for three years in a row now. We don't have many book fairs like this. Like, you know, in America, a lot of uh, booktubers talk about loads of library sales that they've been to. We don't tend to have a lot of those over here in the UK, certainly not where I live anyway. Um, but this book fair comes around once a year, every October, and it's been advertised for about three weeks now and I've been highly anticipating it. So I went this morning, um, it opened at 9.30 and I got there at about 10 to 10, something like that, and it was rammed. I had to queue to get in. Um, it was freezing cold outside as well. But, um, and obviously there's quite a bit of jostling while you're in there, but it was worth it anyway. So I came away with... Um, nine books one of which is a crochet book which I won't show you because I'm sure you're not really that interested um, maybe I'll show you um, next week I'm going to be doing a video where I update you on all of my craft stuff so maybe I will um, include it in that video but I'm just going to show you the other books that I bought uh, this morning during that book sale and the first of those is The Little Red Chairs and this is by Edna O'Brien I try to pick up books that I hadn't seen elsewhere and that were in really really good condition so this is I believe a thriller and that's all I really know about it and I don't, don't really want to know anymore but this cover has always really intrigued me it's really really pretty and I saw it and grabbed it next up is The Revenant and this is by Michael Punk Punke I don't know how you pronounce his last name this is of course the book that the film was inspired by I've heard the book is very very good I've not not seen the film um, because I always like to read the book first and I'm like super behind on all of my film watching so yeah this is about a guy who gets who has to survive in the wilderness and it's really freezing cold I think oh he's a tracker yeah there we go so the, he's left for dead in the wilderness and then he manages to find his way back I think so yeah I found a copy of A Song for Izzy Bradley and this is by Karis Bray I've never read anything by Karis Bray before I did take this out from the library probably about six months ago now but I had to take it back in the end because uh, someone placed an order on it but I saw a paperback copy of it there and so I thought I would grab it I don't I think this is about a family and family life and somebody goes missing uh, and that's all I know but again the cover is really really pretty I have here this beast which is free food for millionaires by Min Jin Lee Min Jin Lee it was the author of oh god oh pachinko it says it on the back and that book has been has got a lot of buzz over the last six months or so this is the other book that she has written um and i remember i had it on my wish list i don't really know what it's about but it's really pretty um so let's have a little look on the back so casey hands years at princeton have given her a refined diction an enviable golf, golf handicap a popular white boyfriend and a degree in economics but no job and a number of bad habits. The older daughter of working class Korean immigrants, Casey inhabits New York a world away from that of her parents. As Casey navigates an uneven course of small triumphs and spectacular failures, a clash of values, ideals and ambitions plays out against the colourful backdrop of New York society, its many layers, shades and divides. That sounds fascinating, so I'm really really glad that I saw a copy of that there. You just don't, I didn't, wouldn't think I would go to something like that and see something like this so really really lucky to get that 
I found a couple of copies of Kieran Desai's The Inheritance of Loss. This won the Man Booker Prize in 2006. Uh, set in the Himalayas. I don't really know anything about it than that. But pretty cover and um, Man Booker winner. And I've heard lots of good things about it. So I thought I'd grab it. I found a hardback edition of Under a Pole Star by Steph Penny. This is her second book. Um, and set in, in where is it, the Arctic Circle and it's about an expedition up there and there's a romance involved so it was in pristine condition and I think I got it for a pound yep I did so couldn't pass that one up I found a copy of Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris which is her first thriller that I've heard very good things about um, I loved her other one, what was it called, the second one mm. The Breakdown. It's called The Breakdown. Um, haven't heard such good things about her third one, her latest one, but heard really good things about this. So again, I thought I would pick it up. Um, and then lastly, I found a copy of The Fireman by Joe Hill. I picked this up mainly for my husband just because I thought that he would enjoy something like this. But this, uh, Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King. And this is about a virus um, where people burn. And that's all I really know about it. It's quite chunky, but it sounds intriguing. Um, so I think it's quite, kind of like sci-fi-esque. Maybe it's... No, it can't be post-apocalyptic. That doesn't make sense. But sort of sci-fi-esque. Uh, maybe a little bit dystopian. I don't really know. But anyway, um, again, really, really good condition. It looks brand new. Maybe like red once. So um, I thought it would get it, I would get it for him and that maybe one day I'll read it too. So there we go guys, they were all of the books that I picked up in October. I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below. Have you read any of these? What did you think of them? And what books did you pick up in October? Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.